Okay, some general um, almost concluding remarks. Always work in a consistent unit system. I said that before and this is super important now. There are some nice pages online where you find um, certain, so let me look it up. So for example, you can have kg meter seconds Newton that would give you Pascal or for example you can work in ton millimeter seconds and Newton that will give you megapascal. The second one is quite, there are many more other consistent unit systems out there. Um, and the second one is quite common among engineers because usually they don't do a lot of gravity um, based analysis so they, they don't care so much about the, um, the mass so they, they don't want to think about mass all the time but rather they are used to construct objects based on millimeters and stresses they are used to use the megapascal as the natural unit for that. Okay, if you do if you do such an explicit analysis, as I, as I said before, it's difficult to analyze or to validate the correctness of your results. But since we're now we're, uh, since we're now in an basically energy-based system, you can actually use um, the tools to check for total kinetic and internal energy to see um, some maybe some problems occurring. So for example, if the kinetogy, kinetic energy um, jumps up like vastly, if you change the, the, pun, the speed of your punch or whatever, then and is much higher than, for example, your internal energy, then you know that your structural dynamic effects are now um, driving the simulation, which is uh, never good. So this should be in balance, but you can find more on this topic uh, online. And this is like a tool that simulators use to assess the correctness of explicit dynamically uh, simulated uh, results. This is, most of the time I would recommend that you for as your boundary conditions you define velocities not displacement. I still recommend to do this also in your static implicit analysis so that if you switch from one to the other you don't get confused. So I would always recommend use velocities as boundary conditions. However in the case of static implicit, it's not a big deal if you directly define such a function because there is no inertia. So if you go from zero to hero in no time, which rarely happens, um, then it's not a big deal because such a jump in velocity or the amplitude of your boundary condition doesn't cause anything. It doesn't cause an almost infinitely high uh, inertial response by the object. However, in explicit dynamic analysis, you should always use such a double S curve for your velocities. Keep in mind that from this point here to this point here, you cover 50% of the distance. So if you say, okay, I have to go, I don't know, by 10 millimeter and have nine I don't know, 0.9 seconds here in this, <coughs> in this period here and 1.1 here. Okay, sorry, I should use a dot. <coughs> sorry. Um, then you will only travel 9.5 millimeter in total, for example. So, you should make sure that this is 0.2, so your total simulation time is 1.1 seconds, but your uh, distance traveled then really is 10 millimeters. Okay, so always use this 
keep that in mind. Um, as I said, I want you, at the end of this course, I want you to write the ask questions. That is the single goal I have in mind with you guys. I'm not a simulation expert and hopefully you will be one day, but the thing is always ask the right questions. And the choice between explicit dynamic and static implicit analysis really is a critical one because this can save you a lot of time and cost you a lot of time and money if you pick the wrong or if you do the wrong decision. Make, I think it's make, yeah, make the wrong decision. So it's important to understand the problem. What is, what is truly, what defines your problem? Back in the days when it was invented, people said the problem size. The, the, basically they said the number of degrees of freedom. So they used it very generally and they said the bigger your problem, the more likely it is that you will end up using explicit because at some point it will save you time because it scales linearly due to this lambd mass matrix and not quadratically which is due to the tangent stiffness matrix as in the implicit case. So your computational costs will be very low for huge problem sizes. And this was actually true back in the days. However, since the, the, the stuff and the problems you want to simulate have become more complex over time, you could also write down here problem complexity and this we, we won't talk about this now hopefully at some point in the future maybe next semester you will see that this could easily mean uh, the, con the number of contacts the complexity of co your, con uh, your contact and so on so if you have a, for example crushing foam almost, um, it, it calls for dynamic explicit uh, analysis, not so much because it is a dynamic um, it, problem, but rather because the dynamic explicit approach can handle contact very well, much better and much easier than implicit one. Why? Because in the implicit one, we talked about this in the last video, you have to do a lot of things to actually fulfill all the contact requirements within your step, within your increment. And here, in this case, in the dynamic explicit analysis, the increments are so small that if you do like a slight mistake in your contact, it doesn't really do much because your next step will already correct it. And this is just one microseconds away. And for example, you have a lot of buckling <coughs> sorry and maybe rupture in your crushing foam so you see for this kind of uh, cases explicit was the choice so like implicit is regaining some attention but on the other hand explicit is fighting back due to increased computational power so there are two basically there is a there's the dark side of explicit analysis and the implicit one, the rebels say, no, we can also do this. We can deal with all this kind of effects at a much uh, faster uh, rate. But um, since computers are becoming more and more powerful, it's just easier to use explicit dynamic analysis because you have to deal with fewer problems, to put it broadly. All right. Uh, so much for the explicit dynamic analysis. I hope you uh, got the idea.